Joby Aviation and NASA have been researching into the future of FTOL and air taxis and the research papers are finally here. So sit tight as we summarize the entire research for you but before we do that, subscribe to our channel One Dollar World for regular stock market videos. Joby Aviation has successfully conducted a series of air traffic simulations in collaboration with NASA's Ames Research Center, focusing on the integration of electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft into today's airspace. The simulation is developed jointly by Joby and NASA airspace engineers after a comprehensive multi-year study assessed the feasibility of incorporating air taxi operations, including at busy airports, using existing air traffic control tools and procedures. NASA's foray into the realm of urban air mobility at Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport represents a pioneering effort that seamlessly intertwines insights from the Federal Aviation Administration, DFW airport subject matter experts, and collaborative engagements with industry partners. The culmination of these endeavors is a meticulous set of five UAM use cases, or traffic scenarios, designed to elicit valuable feedback on the potential intricacies of UAM aircraft operations within the existing tapestry of airspace structures, regulations, and procedures. The foundational methodology employed in the formulation of these uh, use cases is brought under scrutiny, shedding light on the inherent assumptions that underpin each scenario. At the forefront is use case zero, serving as a foundational exploration. This use case unfolds as a UAM flight originating from Frisco, navigating through Class G airspace and culminating at Garland Heliport T-57, also enveloped in Class G airspace. The simplicity of this scenario provides an essential baseline for understanding UAM operations in less complex airspace environments. Building upon this foundational scenario, Use Case 1 introduces a layer of complexity by depicting a flight from Frisco to a downtown Dallas Werther port, 49T, located within the confines of Class B airspace. The distinguishing factor in this scenario is the necessity of the UAM aircraft to obtain clearance into the Class B airspace. An innovative addition to this case is the introduction of a letter of agreement, strategically predefining procedures to minimize the dependence on air traffic control voice communications, thus streamlining the operational process. Use case 2 explores a unique facet of UAM operations, the repositioning of an electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft from Dallas Love Field to downtown Dallas. Notably, this scenario involves no passengers, focusing solely on the relocation of the aircraft from the airport to the downtown area. Three distinct route options are discussed, with one route emerging as the primary choice due to its minimal interaction with ATC. The narrative unfolds further with Use Case 3, detailing a flight originating from downtown DAL and route to DFW. Here, the pilot encounters a sensor fault, prompting a diversion request. The pilot seeks permission to land at a nearby Class D airport equipped to accommodate conventional landings without disrupting the meticulously planned flights into DFW. Transitioning to use cases 4A and 4B, the focus shifts flights departing from Dallas downtown and arriving at DFW, utilizing the Spine Road route nestled between the east and west complexes of DFW. The UAM departure adheres to a predefined path, necessitating entry into Class B airspace at a coordination point on the boundary of the Unicom. Two delineated routes facilitate a north or south approach to distinct landing areas between the runways. However, the utilization of Spine Road as a UAM route introduces challenges. The prevailing departure traffic crossing between runways poses potential risks as conventional aircraft intersect with UAM operations. A rigorous analysis suggests that a procedural modification for departing traffic crossing over could enhance vertical separation between conventional departures and UAM traffic, potentially mitigating the controller's communication workload. Nonetheless, persistent wake separation concerns between large aircraft crossing over and smaller UAM vehicles on the Spine Road route necessitate careful consideration due to their implications for ATC workload. Discussions on the development of use cases for urban air mobility involving NASA, the FAA, local facilities and JB Aviation highlighted several challenges that must be addressed for the early implementation of UAM. One significant hurdle is the requirement for aircraft to contact air traffic control for entry into Class B, C, or D airspace. Dealing with delays in gaining entry to Class B airspace and potential airborne holds are critical considerations. Writing letter of agreements specifying procedures for entering Class B airspace could be instrumental in reducing controller workload. Additionally, establishing a Unicom area with Class B airspace may decrease the necessity for ATC communication during repositioning flights. 
Local air traffic facilities could also devise their own routes to support UAM operations, necessitating procedural changes to enhance altitude separation between UAM and conventional aircraft on visual approaches. Operating UAM aircraft in busy airport areas introduces several factors that need careful consideration. Some UAM routes may be too close to conventional traffic, challenging radar separation and wake turbulence advisory avoidance. The possibility of traffic collision avoidance system resolution advisories or traffic advisories triggered by UAM traffic flying beneath conventional traffic further complicates matters. Traditional aircraft flying visual approaches may not adhere to predictable flight paths, requiring less efficient tactical separation services. Implementing procedural changes might mitigate these issues, but specific solutions tailored to different airspaces want further research. While in analysis of the interaction between UAM operations and conventional traffic in urban areas has been undertaken, additional research in this domain is imperative. The development of use cases and subsequent analysis point towards the need for further research, particularly focusing on early operations with simple use cases progressing to more complex evaluations. Addressing questions about clearing UAM aircraft into controlled airspace can be approached through the creation and testing of specific procedures, potentially in human-in-the-loop simulations. Consideration should be given to factors such as the location of coordination points, holding areas, the effectiveness of a unicom area, modifications to existing approach and departure procedures, the use of beacon codes, and the workload implications of creating and employing LOAs. Collaboration with ATC and UAM subject matter experts is crucial to ensure the feasibility of these alternatives before simulation or field testing. Integrating UAM elements such as corridors and the pickup and set down into simulations can provide valuable insights into performance and safety improvements. The issue of separating UAM aircraft from conventional flights emerged as a key concern, posing an additional burden on controllers and lacking scalability in the long term. Designing UAM routes and airport operations to minimize separation problems between legacy and UAM flights is imperative. Potential solutions could involve requiring departing aircraft to cross over runways at higher altitudes. Exploring these separation questions through fast-time simulations using various combinations of UAM routes and conventional traffic patterns is an initial step. Long-term scalability solutions proposed by the FAA UAM current ops, such as novel airspace structures like corridors, also warrant research and development efforts. Further research on UAM operations in the DFW airspace should delve into topics highlighted in the use case exercise. Both fast-time and human-in-the-loop simulations serve as effective methods for exploring initial solutions before embarking on field studies. As of December 21, 2023, at 1452 IST, Joby Aviation stock is currently priced at $6.57, reflecting a decline of 0.41, which is minus 5.87%, from the previous day's closing value. Key metrics provide a snapshot of the stock's performance, revealing a day range between $7.02 and $3.15, while the 52-week range spans from $3.15 to $11.98. The market capitalization stands at $4.86 billion, with 696.32 million shares outstanding and a public float of 382.56 million. The stock's beta is calculated at 1.74 and the P-E ratio is not applicable due to negative earnings per share. Short interest as of November 30, 2023 is reported at 74.08 million shares, and the average trading volume is 5.84 million shares. Recent news on December 20, 2023 highlights Joby Aviation's successful completion of air traffic simulations in collaboration with NASA. This achievement suggests the potential integration of their electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft into existing airspace, showcasing the company's commitment to advancing the future of air mobility. Analyst opinions on Joby stock are mixed, with some expressing optimism about the company's long-term growth potential while maintaining caution regarding near-term profitability. This divergence in views may be attributed to the complexities and uncertainties surrounding the nascent e vitol market. Examining the market trends, the electric vehicle market is experiencing significant momentum, acting as a favorable factor for Joby Aviation. The broader shift towards sustainable transportation solutions aligns with the company's focus on electric vertical aviation. However, it's essential to note that the eVTOL market is still in its early stages, facing regulatory hurdles and technological challenges. Navigating these obstacles will be pivotal for Joby Aviation's sustained success in the evolving landscape of urban air mobility. 
Remember that this is not financial advice and you should always do your own research and make informed investment decisions. That was all for today. Let us know if you think this stock will make you rich or not in the comment section down below. Hit like and subscribe to our channel $1 World for more such penny stock videos and we'll see you in the next one.